the more I run, the more I get to know myself. And I realized that as I was running, I started to think about my past a lot. Because you spend a lot of time just thinking. You're in solitude and you start thinking about life in general. And for me, when I was younger, a crucial moment that shaped who I am now. So I would always go back to that place. And what I found out after all these runs is that coming to the US, being an immigrant, being raised by an amazing parent, and just having to go through the struggles. Like I always wanted to look up to someone to guide me, but nobody was there from a male standpoint, like a father figure. And now I'm at a point where I'm that person for that kid, where in a way I am that kid's hero that's going for things, that's trying shit that's signing up for difficult things. It's wanting to like help others and like move others, inspiring other people. So it's good to like reconnect with that person in the past and being like, hey, I'm here. It's gonna be okay. And by being okay with that, which means like being okay with me, it gives me the freedom and the willingness to do that for others. So that's how I was able to just find myself through this journey and my past in a way helped become who I am now. And it's full circle. And I think that's like a beautiful thing. My name is Daniel Flores. I'm 29 years old, born in Mexico City, and I moved to the U.S. when I was 10 years old. I was raised by a single parent, which meant that I needed to push harder at a younger age. And uh, pushing and persevering is something that I experienced from a very young age and has allowed me to move forward to the point of uh, becoming the man that I am now. Leadville 100 is happening in August 19th of this year. It is a 100 mile race up in the Rocky Mountains. So that is Leadville, Colorado, 10,500 feet of elevation. And uh, being prepping for the past six months and looking forward to participating and being part of this race. I'm proud of being Hispanic. I believe there's a lot of greatness in the 
Hispanic community. From the culture, the food, the music, the art, the language, there's so much beauty to it, and I am grateful for it. Growing up as a Mexican immigrant in a Hispanic family, I got to experience the lifestyle and the values of what it's like to be Hispanic. So we put family first, we put our people first, and that's something that really aligns with the values that I have now. At the same time, we have faith and we have that desire of becoming better people. So being a Hispanic in America means that we deal with a lot of challenges, a lot of difficult moments, and we have to endure and persevere. At the same time, in order to reach our goals, we have to go out there and attempt things in order to make them happen. And uh, when I think about Hispanics, I think about people that are wanting a better life, people that want to get to the next level. And when I think about Hispanics, I think about si se puede. We can do it. We can attempt big things and we can make it happen. in the endurance space there's not a lot of people that look like me and I've seen it when I did my half Ironman when I did my ultra marathon and I believe that we're not represented mainly because we don't see people that look like us doing it so we don't even know it's possible that it exists plus there's a lot of blockers such as you have to spend a lot of time doing it there has to be like a lot of money spent as well in order to make it happen so when we're growing up it's not possible right parents working two three jobs no energy for like hey let's go run let's go work out eat healthy it's just surviving and that kind of translates to us doing the same thing and we get to a point where you know, we realize it's not the healthiest way to do things. And I think that's what really sparked that interest for me of wanting to become healthier and then tapping into these places where I didn't see people that look like me. I was like, you know, that's even a better reason to be doing it because now it shows that people that look like me can do it. And now this shows other people that's possible. So for me, like it's always been about where are people not currently at? How can I put myself in that position so others can do the same thing as well? Kind of like following a trail of some sort. And yeah, I think for me, like that's one of the, the reasons why I do the things I do, just to make sure that it's shown that it's possible that people from the Hispanic community can do those things. And I see that with other people as well, like just being able to do that in different aspects of life. And I think that's a way where we can encourage others to do something that they weren't familiar with before. Uh, yeah, just ran here in Dallas, took some new streets, nice views. And yeah, overall feeling like it was a solid run. Started around 5.44 a.m. It was dark, saw the sunrise, and then uh, I could see the Dallas skyline, just beautiful from far away. And uh, yeah, right here, you see Dallas as well. It's, uh, it's a nice day here, it's not super hot. I think it's gonna get hotter throughout the day, but uh, yeah, just happy and, and satisfied with today's work.
there you go. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Estoy muy orgullosa de Dani. Sé que ha hecho un trabajo increíble de muchos meses de preparación. Él estuviera el tiempo como estuviera, él no había un día que descansara. Desde que mis hijos eran pequeños, yo siempre les inculqué que ellos podían hacer todo lo que se pusieran ellos en su mente y que lucharan duro por hacerlo. Yo sé que todo es posible. Venimos a este país hace 20 años. En realidad fueron, fue un cambio muy fuerte para ellos, ya que en primer lugar el idioma, el dejar este, pues, eh, todo atrás, empezar una vida de cero, el, tal vez el que la mayoría de sus compañeros hablaban inglés y ellos se sentían un poco cohibidos por no hablar el mismo idioma o no ser aceptados. Es eh, en la escuela igual, este, fue algo muy difícil para, para él poderse adaptar luego, luego, porque pues, las clases seguían, nadie se paraba para especialmente ayudarlo, sino él tenía que salir de una u otra forma adelante por el sol. Desde niño noté que Dani pues, era un líder porque todos los niños querían hacer lo mismo que él hacía. Y entonces, eh, con cosas muy pequeñas, por ejemplo, en una ocasión, él iba en, el, en la primaria, se quiso cortar, el, rapar por completo el cabello, y varios niños lo hicieron. Y cosas que él hacía, la gente lo seguía y quería imitarlo. Y ahorita, eh, que ha hecho podcast o ha este, tratado de motivar a la gente, yo veo que la gente, Dani los inspira, se motivan y eso es muy bueno porque eso es lo que hace falta para que tantos jóvenes se dediquen a hacer el deporte, a tener en la mente que si luchan duro por hacer algo pueden lograrlo. Mucha gente se está inspirando en él y si él no lo hiciera de esta forma, pues la gente pues, se desanimaría. Entonces él siempre lucha totalmente por conseguir sus metas y es por lo que la gente se inspira y dice, si Dani lo hizo, yo también lo puedo hacer. Y está ahí el lema de, si sí se puede. Bueno, para, para mí Dani es eh, una bendición. Es una persona con unos valores muy fuertes, muy, buen educa muy bien educado. Es una persona generosa, de gran corazón. Eh, no hay nada que no le pueda él platicar o comentar que él me apoye. Eh, es una persona noble, eh, muy lindo. Creo que las personas que lo conocen opinarán lo mismo de mí. No nada más es un, un gran hijo, hermano, amigo. La verdad, este, eh, es muy bonito. Es muy bonito este, todos los comentarios que yo también recibo de sus amistades, siempre positivos de, de él. Eso pues, a mí me orgullece y me hace sentir como mamá, como la, eh, la mamá increíble ¿no? de Dani, de tener un hijo así. Es muy cool ver a Daniel como un atleta. Por uno, vino aquí cuando me conocí a Daniel hace un año y medio. Fue solo un background de running. Y desde entonces, poniendo en la estrategia, la progresión que hemos tomado para llevarlo a hacer un triatlón. Uh, Ironman, if you will, half Ironman was a really cool progression. From there, to be able to see him step into this role, hey, I want to do more than just say be a triathlon athlete. I want to do something that's going to challenge me mentally. Has been a really cool paradigm shift to speak more into that, the progression we've taken, and not just saying do stuff that he know he can do. It's honestly getting comfortable with the unknown. So having him do training pieces that don't look Normal. Uh, yeah. Fifth set, Daniel. Fifth set. We got five to seven. So if you're done with this one, you can stop. No nah. pressure. We'll do this if one not, and one more. All right. Then we'll do six. All right. One, two, three, two, one. Hit it hard. Come on. Good. There's a little bit of blood. There's some sweat. I think we can get some tears out of them today. There's a small chance he can cry. Come on, baby. Let's see a face. 
and get it back to 14. There it is. Nine seconds. Come on, push. There it is. Three, two, two one. one. I know it. I know it. There it is. Those legs are working. Use those piernas. Let's go. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. And you cruise that run. Three, two, one. Turn and go. Breathe. And if you look at that pace right there, as compared to that sprint, that's probably what left is going to look like. Yeah, I would imagine. And if you think about the heat deprivation that he's experiencing right now, the way I'm trying to emulate what a hill and that lactic fatigue is going to feel like going uphill. You won't be sprinting <laughs> doing 100 miles. I can almost guarantee that. It's the acclimation of 14,000 feet feel like I just ran a sprint. Well, let's try to capture that moment right now while we can. And so that's the pace you'll probably see when he's going after that leg build. Yeah, it's perfect. It's pushing it more than usual. Mm -hmm. Hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe. Yeah. Hey. I feel like I'm in Leadville right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, That's going good. uphill. That's good. Woo. That's the point. Well, you want to roll this back in? Let's do it. Then I'll carry that box and we'll keep it going. I got some blood on here if you want it back. Woo. Oh, man. It's for the next person. Yeah. <laughs> they can get uh, some inspiration. All right. That, that was good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Felt it. My lungs felt it. My heart felt it. We push through, and that's uh, what we do. It's what I do. I'll do it anytime you do it. All right. Well, that is uh, a wrap for this Tuesday workout. Got coached by Coach Chance. He's been helping me with the lead build prep, specifically the strength training component of it. And uh, today the main goal was really to push my body to the limit from a fitness standpoint. So not a lot of strength, but more about my aerobic capacity, just like being able to go the distance when it gets hard. So yeah, appreciate it again, Ramon, behind the, the camera, putting this together. And uh, excited for the next uh, thing that's happening on Thursday. We're gonna be doing a test, body test, in order to see where my numbers are and see what I need to do to improve. We're gonna check my VO2 max. Right now it's at 53 from uh, what the watch tells me, which means that I need to increase that to about 58. We'll talk more about what that means with the doctor on Thursday, and then he can do the breakdown. We just know that we're trying to improve from a strength perspective, from a running perspective, so we can go the distance. Peace. How you doing? My name is Dr. Gerald Barnes. I'm with Highland Park Chiropractic Care, and uh, we focus on sports uh, rehabilitation. Um, today, we're going to be performing a uh, metabolic test on uh, Daniel, and we're just going to basically overall assess his overall health, and uh, we're going to walk through everything and explain everything. Now, this is to measure the heart rate, mm -hmm. and we're just tracking like that. Oh. Yeah, what we're trying to see what your body's doing right now at rest. Uh, burning, you know, as far as burning calories at rest. Okay. Uh, she's actually going to uh, calibrate the device and we're going to come up and test the mask. We're get going here. The mask, mm -hmm. all right. Yep. Official. Don't look like Darth Vader. There you
forward to seeing the results which is like being part of the process right now because I've seen it like I've seen people do things like this you know whether it's like a video a movie but to be actually like be doing it I think it feels really nice Dallas, Texas, Clyde Warren Park, July 11th, and today we're doing an interview with Zoa. And Zoa is uh, an energy drink that's co-founded by The Rock. So Dwayne Johnson, they reached out, they were inspired by the story, the movement of Si Se Puede, of wanting to go out there and get it, and inspiring the Hispanic community. So right now, we're about to get inside that bus, and that's where the interview is going to be. Excited, a little nervous because man, I get a little uncomfortable with the camera and like having interviews. But I believe this is where you grow. And in order to tell the story, man, just gotta do what is right and uncomfortable just to continue spreading it. Entonces, si se puede, no? Here we go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, my name is Raymond Braun, and I am the host of the ZOA Feel Something Bigger Storytelling Series. And we're here in Dallas, and I just got a chance to chat with Daniel about his Leadville 100 pursuit, Si Se Puede, and all the amazing work that he's doing. And it was really important to me that we got a chance to talk to Daniel and highlight him because I'm super inspired by his story. I love that Daniel's all about giving back to his community and showing people what's possible when you invest in yourself and when you really explore the limits of what we're capable of as human beings. So I'm psyched to follow your journey and I'm really glad that we met. Dude, thank you, man. <laughs> of course. Yeah, appreciate it. Sorry, I can be better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Dude, we did it. Hey, Zilla. <laughs> we did it. I feel like just everything that we've been working on for the past months and just getting to this point to like share the why yeah it just felt really good just like being able to like let it out i was very comfortable ray the guy interviewing great dude so it was like a good conversation like it was it was flowing but yeah man just like being able to like say si se puede like to me that was huge So just got done with a workout, met with Coach Chance, and it was pretty intense. It was a lot of cardio with weights, so going from one mach machine to the other, so like skiing, and then uh, the treadmill with the bike, and then doing some kettlebell work. But yeah, got that done. There were times I wanted to quit, and I stopped for a little bit, kept going, and now I'm waiting for my brother who's about to show up. And yeah, it's uh, been a long journey growing up with my brother. So we go way, way back from uh, the Mexico City days. Just, uh, he's four years older. Man, we used to play soccer growing up. We used to fight a lot. And yeah, just went through life with an older brother. So we didn't have a, a father figure and we had to figure out our way to become the man that we are now. So it was uh, a different journey as far as like doing it without that father figure and in a way like testing things out. Things were not working out so we had to like do something different. We had to like put ourselves in positions that we really didn't have connections with and yeah just like had to work a little harder than most people with with a dad so i think that's where the bond really comes from because like we understand that it, it was just tough like being able to grow up in america as mexican immigrants and having to work for everything that we had from a very young age i don't see him as often but when i do see him is like quality time and I'm just grateful for him always being there. You know, like there's always that person that you can count on. And for me, like that's him, that I can talk to him about a lot of things. Uh, Danny inspires me every single day. I, I, I'm the older brother, but I, I look up to him. He is uh, a brilliant human being. He has a good heart. Uh, he has a lot of uh, creative ideas all the time. Uh, if, if I have uh, some doubts about something that's going on with my life, uh, I'm gonna invite him over and we're gonna talk about it and he's gonna give me his point of view. We might not always agree with it, but it's always nice to see the point of view of someone that uh, is very uh, successful and at the same time some, someone who cares about me. Si se puede means that uh, it can be done and we will make it happen. Uh, I am very similar to my brother when it comes to excuses. We don't like excuses. Uh, at the end of the day, you either make it happen or you don't make it happen. Uh, but when you start pointing fingers and blaming the blame on other people, then uh, that's when you have a problem. Uh, I think for me, si se puede means we're gonna make it happen and we're gonna have a plan to execute it. And we're, gonna, we're not gonna make any excuses. We're gonna make it happen and we're gonna inspire other people along the way. And that's what he's doing. And uh, it's, it was very nice for me to see all the people that he inspires. And, uh, and it's a positive influence, you know? Uh, it's, it's a positive movement. And uh, 
people actually follow it and they're very excited to, to give the results. I mean, there's two weeks left until go time. And you have to believe it before you can see it. And you have to believe in yourself. Like that's what I've learned during this prep where I just believe that I'm able to do this, that I'm able to like train, I'm able to put into work and i feel like once you believe it enough then like the right energy the right people will start to come together and in a way help through this journey and all that to say is i think it's the first time where i've gone all in into some thing that seems impossible and in a way just went for it and being like trusting this process and I don't know what's going to happen like in my head I already crossed the line like I visualized it also some things can happen that I can't control but two weeks out like I'm proud of where I'm now where i'm at now i'm just proud to be able to go through all that training from jan yeah. to august finished peak week in a way like i'm done with the training yeah. like i'm not gonna get better in two weeks mm -hmm. it's just a matter of not messing up so not running more not pushing more than i have to so the training is done and i am so happy i'm grateful that i'm able to like move to do the things that i want to do yeah. and now it's just a matter of finalizing logistics and getting up there this uh this weekend yeah but man it had to start with like believing in it yeah. and before you can even see it to the race I would hear that having a strong team was key in order to finish the race so right from the get-go I knew that I needed to have a strong team now I really didn't know what that meant a few months back but what I did know was that I wanted to have people there that in a way inspire me and inspire others and also people that are kind, people that are doing things with good intentions. So when I put my mind into that, I started to think of people like family, friends, and even people that I had never met, that I met through social media, but I believe had that in common. Now, the thing was like putting them together in one room, because yeah, it was gonna be the first time a lot of them met, but I knew that individually, 
every person there had something good to offer and they were just like kind people. So I had no doubt that they were gonna get along. But I hope that we can step out here with that idea in mind. And just to touch on that city and county piece, you know, again, from the first moment I picked up the mic three days before the first race in 2021, I look around where we are. Every day I come, I get on my bike, I go for a run. Nothing about this back, backyard gets, gets old. It never gets old. And if we take a moment and we just breathe in for that second, 10,152 feet, here you are for the race across the sky. And how about this backyard? Pretty amazing, right? And the humans that drive here, the humans that make this all possible, I got to tell you, they're working as hard as our staff. The amount of meetings that have gone on this year is above and beyond where it's ever been. Our law enforcement between city and county, so that's our police department and our sheriffs, has been extraordinary. We have had a ridiculous amount of support in that area, and it has increased our safety across the board. If you see them out there, please give them a big round. And give them one now. What the heck, right? I'm going to get back to them in just a second. In addition to that, we have our Office of Emergency Management that just helps us look at everything critically and decide how do we put this on as safe as we can. So when you're out on course and, a, and somebody is standing there telling you not to do this or to do that, whether it's a, to a crew member or to a racer, that's been well thought out. Please help me support them and join me in following what they're asking you to do. All the way back to our shuttles from our traffic and parking crews to the people standing there at the intersections making sure you're safe going out. So big thank yous to all those folks, but also the county and the city for all the conversations that have gone into making this the absolutely safest we possibly can and the best experience for you. So those pieces are some of the, the gratitude pieces that I want to hold, but also just in the piece that we get to share this journey with you. And we get to share it from 4 a.m. tomorrow all the way through. And we will see you on both sides. Let's go. Of Let's go, yeah. The number? 393. Dude, yeah. say that week prior to the race it was just really hard to to focus on the race in my head I was like okay I did the work but now I had to take care of all these other logistics and I would say that if I could describe my feelings prior to the race I would say stressed out splash of fear of like the unknown and meeting up with people and then they were breaking down their plan to a science. Like this is what we're gonna do and this is exactly where we're gonna take this supplement. To my head, I'm thinking, man, I'm underprepared just based on what people are sharing. But in a way, like that was something that helped me step it up as well. Where I was like, you know what? Like it's not too late to start this process of over planning. So I started to pick up some game, started to just learn from others, looking at the caught up times, ensuring that I remember those. And in a way like that helped me provide a basic plan to the team when we met up and I was able to show the map. And I was like, okay, based on what I know, this is what's gonna happen. And then from a fuel standpoint, I started to like think, okay, this is what I'm gonna take every 13 15 miles so overall like the week started a little rough but as it got closer to the race i think my brain just started to to turn a little more into its go time and i started to gain more confidence and lose more of that fear because i was like this is just what i needed like physically i'm solid i just needed to get my mind right
forza madre, la torre, questo che sta da sotto la parte, come se tu sei la parte, se non casa non lo so, e anche la sorella che santa come avrà la madre scherzata, che il padre di quello che è santa, che il tuo è mi guarda, che si accompagna a me, se pare se non è la fine di vita, da che sono scusa in cui io sono il corazone e l'anima mia, divina provvidenza che non si accorre, non si alcanza, ma la fine che non si guarda, morning it's uh, 3 41 a.m. here in Labiel it's a big day he's doing getting ready for this we are all excited and uh, we are very very proud and happy to support him along the way stay tuned we have tons of stuff happening I feel awake rested I didn't sleep that much based on the hours but I just feel alive yeah man and I think the reason why is because of the people around me. I'm able to just get that energy from people that I love, family, friends, just coming together, supporting this thing, and just knowing that it's bigger than me. Like, I don't see it as like, oh, gotta run 100 miles. It's more like, man, this has a bigger purpose, and I'm driven by that higher purpose. Not by the mileage, driven by the higher purpose. That's when you know it's special. It's when you wake up and you're like, fuck yeah. Not like, oh, I have to run 100 miles. No, it's like, we get to make some sort of change. We get to make some sort of impact. And we're here, man.
headed to May Queen. He'll be 13 miles in. Should be landed in right around 6.30. Getting on the bus with the team. Let's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, so race starts 4 a.m. Um, you know, you, you see your runner go off, and 15 seconds later, it's it's game time. Uh, first checkpoint's make wing. Uh, you're you're going to be about 13 miles into the race. Uh, it's cold. It's chilly. It's right on the lake, so you get a lot of that lake breeze. Um, it's night out. Uh, probably still <laughs> waking up, drinking some coffee. Uh, you know, getting into our, our happy moods, if you will. It's been been a long morning already, being up for about four or five hours. Uh, you settle in, you get to May Queen, and you start seeing um, seeing some of the runners come through, and all of a sudden that energy is there. Uh, the race is on, game day's on, the sun comes up, and it's time to roll. So at that point, we're really starting to settle in and see you know what kind of race is Daniel going to have. Uh, you can prepare, you can have the time set, you can have the paces set, uh, but there's a lot of emotions. Uh, sometimes runners can set out too hot, too fast. Uh, they can get caught behind, you know, what they call the conga line and get stuck behind slower runners. Um, that first 13 miles, um, you, in my opinion, you don't, you don't uh, win the race, but you can definitely lose the race. How you feel about it? Feeling good, dialed it back a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Nice. We'll take this one. Okay. And then I'm gonna use the Russian okay. real quick. Perfect. Go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you doing? Let's go! Woo! All right. You're seeing that you're hydrated. Yeah, hydrated. Yeah. Looking good. Hand bottle. Hand bottle if you have it. That'd be amazing. I'll just take it. Thank you. Feeling? I'm feeling good. Okay. Yeah, went a little slower. Oh, dude, you are right on point. Mm -hmm. I love the time you're in right now. Yeah, just perfect. heart rate pretty low. Okay. Just gonna cruise all the way to outward down. We'll see you right there. We'll see you right there. Yeah, we'll take Thank you. Appreciate you guys. You're here, man. Hey, mm -hmm. see you at the next stop. We'll run with you out. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you for following us. You're killing it, bro. Yeah, I did. Alright, guys. I I met Lewis about eight years ago, and I met him through work. So we used to work at the same place, and I remember looking up to him. He's uh, someone that has always been doing great things, and just the values that he has are some of the values that align with me, and also some of the areas that I want to improve on. So in a way, I, I look up to Lewis. So being able to fast forward eight years later and have him be there at Leadville was a really cool experience, right? Because in a way that hero pulls up and helps the team, helps me get to the finish line. So like, that's how I felt. And I knew that he was a great person to add to the team because he had ran Leadville last year so he was the crew chief at Leadville and he was able to ensure that all I had to worry was the running portion everything else was taken care of so I think that's super key and he just did an amazing job when I asked him if he wanted to come he was like yeah like let's make it happen like right away so his willingness of being able to show up 
and add a ton of value was uh, just, you know, something that I'm forever grateful for. Coming down, man. Yeah, feel good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You're making great time. Pace is right there, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the heads up as far as like the full summit. summit. Yeah. How's your water? Good. So these are gone. Perfect. All in. Need to refill. Awesome. Keep working hard. You got all your food up here. Thank you. And then, yeah, English muffin, banana. Get you right up here on the left, okay? Yeah. Awesome. We'll always find you. Don't worry about it. You finding us, okay? Appreciate it. Let's go. Muffin, please. Man, two gels. Two gels, guys. Right, we got PB and J for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Get you some of that. That's a good stuff. Rub the horse down. Rub the horse down. You didn't trip or anything. You're going good. Yeah, feeling good. Thank you. Feeling good, bro? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Thank you. All right, how are you guys, man? Thanks. What are you doing? Four minutes left. Better now you're here, man. There we go. <laughs> what was that? Four minutes. Okay. Oh, we got time. <laughs> Chill. Let <laughs> me <laughs> relax. Why did you stop, Danny? We're good. <laughs> really? We're good. All right. So that was mile 23. Feeling good. Feeling strong. And then I'm um, heading towards that direction, I believe. <laughs> and you guys need more miles. Thing is, uh, the warm up still. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just getting started. Hell yeah. Let's go! Si se puede! Si se puede! Si se puede! Si se puede! Let's go! Energy was high. And to me, like, I'm the type of person that that's something where I get energy, fuel. So if I hear, like, people, like, being happy, positive, they're like being encouraging, si se puede, all these things. I'm like, I'm just like refueling the tank that helps me to move forward. So yeah, it was cool just to like see you guys after thinking like five hours of, uh, yeah, Leadville 100. And then, yeah, in a way like seeing you guys happy too, like for five minutes, just was a way for me to continue. Take that into
Uh, Twin Lakes is awesome. So Twin Lakes, next checkpoint. Uh, this is the crew party ground. Um, once we get the entire crew out to Twin Lakes, we probably have anywhere from you know eight to ten hours just to hang out. It's exactly what um, it describes. You got two beautiful lakes. You're sitting around the mountains. You got all the crews in one spot, um, and so you really get to see a bunch of runners come through uh, in this really neat environment and area. But then also you're going to start to see um, some of the uh, top the top runners come back through as well. So since it's a 50 mile out, 50 mile back, uh, you have some of the uh, first, second, you know, third fifth place finishers uh, coming through pretty early as well as they come back through Hope Pass and just seeing that energy, just seeing people who um, are really at the high performance of any sport and get, they get to run right by you. Um, so it's like being on the field at the Super Bowl um, as you see some of these uh, really, really elite runners um, come through that. And to get that experience for the crew, that's why I say it's, it's a lot of fun too for us just to, to be in that environment, see some of these uh, top elite athletes, uh, you know, for eight, nine hours, hanging out, having a good time doing cold plunges eating cheeseburgers uh, you know that's where the bond is made in my opinion where you're, you're meeting new people you're getting to know them you know no cell phone service no TV no Netflix right uh, you're in nature you're in a beautiful spot people you just met are around a, a common goal uh, I think Twin Lakes is really where the memories are made crushing it bro it's a great time, 12.30. Feeling good? 12.30. Yeah, how was it? I appreciate it. And the uphills are pretty difficult, but downhill, man, I managed to do it well. Flats, I can run. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling fed? Pee's good? Hydration's yeah. good? I would say I need to refuel all of it. Yep. Oh, hey, we got a runner coming through. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Man. How's your stomach? Take your time, y'all. We got time. Chew it. Eat that really? up, boy. Yeah. yeah. Getting you guys have a water? <laughs> like a Gatorade? 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 Gatorade. Gatorade. Yeah, Gatorade. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm starting to feel it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of like going uphill. Thighs. Whenever, yeah, thighs, hip, hamstrings, hip, a little bit of that too. Oh gosh. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is where it starts. We're about to go to Hope Pass, which is somewhere up there. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Can you right. put the small stuff in yeah. my shirt? Sure. Small stuff? Thank you. Yeah. All right, man, time's up. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. Let's go! We're ready for Hope Pass. We just uh, ate some food, nice job. some water, some electrolytes. And it was tough, but man, we're still pushing.
okay, man. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, okay. You got it, brothers. We'll come to that mountain. You got it. You got it. pretty tough yeah I think it was tough because I didn't have enough food and water fixing for like half a marathon but I feel like it's about to get pretty hard it is yeah conserve that energy so all good man might even like no I think I can jog this one yeah going up there let's see yeah I guess I have about It's an exciting thing to see how my body's going to react when it gets tough, when it hits mile 60, 70, 80. What am I going to be thinking about? How is my body going to respond to that stress? And I'm already seeing it, visualizing it. It's going to suck and it's going to hurt and it's going to be so hard that I believe that in some moments I'm gonna be questioning, like why am I going through this? Should I just tap out? Should I like rest more? And to me, like that's what's exciting about it. It's like this battle against myself, but knowing that I have put in the reps with all these like races before where I was able to accomplish them. And now that I'm thinking more about it, it is a scary race. And do I have fear? I would say yes. Yeah. When I think about the night, it's gonna get cold. My body's just gonna be beat up. Like, how am I gonna react to that, right? So for me, like, the fear is real because I'm human. And at the same time, like, this is a way to show me that I'm doing something hard because if it was easy, I wouldn't have that fear. Now, I'm still gonna do it regardless of the fear. I think that's what makes someone fearless. Someone fearless is not like, hey, they don't have any fear. No, they have fear, but they still do it despite that fear. I got you. Come on, we're coming! I got you, I got you! Let's go! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Go, 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 go! <laughs> I tell you everything about it. Come on! Yo! Let's go, P. Alright. Fucking. Dude, fucking P. Jam right it over here! We made it alive to our mountain! Let's go! Fucking crazy. Yo, yeah, I'm grateful I'm alive. Dude, you look awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Oh my gosh. Oh. 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 It was so hard just yeah. to like get on top yes. and then go to the other side yes. and then get back up, <laughs> come down, down, and it was dark on the way down. Hey, did you run from the bears? 
They ran away from me. Oh, oh, let's go. Go. I ate a lot of things. I don't even know what I ate. To be honest. How long is your eating? Yeah. There are some noodles over there. Oh, you have some noodles. Hey, the noodles and mashed potatoes. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, bro. <laughs> Thank you. You got another two, three minutes if you want to just sit and take your time. Yeah. You got it. Okay, take your jacket so Jeremy can carry stuff for you, right? So take things, take your jacket, have it all on, and then if you're gotcha. case, I can hand it to him. Okay, sounds good. So what is uh, what is the next uh, stop? Okay, we'll see you at Tree Line. Tree Line. Remember where all the trees are on the side? So we'll gotcha. There, okay? Got it. You're gonna, you got to get to hat. Jeremy okay. knows all the numbers, so you just let him guide you. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hey! Go! Say I love you, Mom! <laughs> 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 you want to pop it right now? Shall I see you? Mm -hmm. This is it. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. Alright, bro. Okay, let's go. We're good. We'll get it. Yes, sir. We love you, bro. Si se puede! Si se puede! One, two, three! Si se puede! Basically, Yeah? Yeah, I wasn't too sure because I was pushing it. Yeah, but like, you come in like basically the same time every time. It's not like you're getting slower. But I think it seems like you're really conserving and intentionally not going out too hot. Right. Keep pushing, see where we go. After we leave Twin Lakes, um, there's an unofficial aid station called Tree Line. Uh, it's actually a really cool spot. It's exactly also what it sounds like. You are sitting in a field with trees on either side of you. Uh, it's, you're going to be there right around 1 a.m. You know, the stars are out. Uh, it's a bit of a party area. You're going to have some music going, some of the crews going that know about the secret spot. Uh, so it's a really fun point for the crew to be in. Uh, having said that, the emotions usually shift for the runner. Um, they just got back from Hope Pass. They're headed into the night. The fueling is starting to get tough. It's tough to eat. Emotions are, are running a little deep um, as they probably expended a lot of emotional energy just going through Hope Pass too. And they usually come into tree line pretty, uh, usually at their darkest moment. Um, they had to go back and climb half pipe again, uh, which was tough. And they're really having to really dig deep to get through that end. So warning the crew, telling the crew, um, saying, hey, you know, we're going to see our runner for the first time um, in a bit of a struggle, in a bit of a fight, um, in a bit of an emotional state uh, that maybe we aren't used to them seeing in. And that was a really good spot as we really kind of got to gauge how Daniel was doing. Um, he was doing strong, he was doing really well, he was doing strong, but definitely, uh, definitely his first sign of uh, emotional uh, stress. Yes, sir, how you feeling? Okay, so a few things. Good. Have some blisters ready? underneath. Okay. Okay. Wondering if we can do something about it on the next stop. Okay. And then, uh, okay. like something to like, wake me up a little bit. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that should be it. Okay. okay. <laughs> do you need hello? Do you want to take care of the blisters or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they yeah. said from the last one it was yeah. 7.5 miles, but I watched coming four, so I don't know how far away I'm Yeah, you have about three Chug that for me for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Do you want to score it and then we'll load you up at the next station? You look awesome, man. <laughs> Crushing it. Doing good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Got it. A little bit more? Down here. Yeah. Do a little bit more. Then we'll drink the rest there. You guys have uh, batteries? Oh, uh, did you get the yeah, light? We have a brand new one. Oh, nice. Thank you. Do we have enough time for the blisters here, or should we do it over there? What do you think? I said it's an hour if you can. Okay. It's a, like hour and a half, maybe. Okay. Uh, if that. I, I think y'all are pretty close. That's why I say go to the aid station, grab your drop bag, if, if we don't get there in time. So. All right, all right. Sounds it's like all, a good plan. All, right, all right, see you there. Good luck. See you guys there. Bro, yeah. kill it. You got, got it. Woo! Yeah. His his left leg. Stuff out there. Got some blisters. Yeah. Oh, we got to look at you catch up, boy. And it's just, yeah, it's tough to even like walk. Dark, cold. Body. Yeah. It's different after 677 miles. Three nine three. Three nine three. Yeah. Okay. If that's it, then that's yeah. fine. All right. I don't see it. Yeah, we'll I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Danny. Yeah. Woo! Take a seat, bro. Take a seat. We got you covered. Need a blanket? I'm sure. But just as a warning, don't get scared. It's pretty, pretty ugly right now. Here you go. You didn't know you were getting a pedicure today? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. You got it. This is the easy part. Right, right, right. Keeping you alive, bro. Hey. Piss her off. Look at that. That's a fast video. Yeah. 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 Got it. It's, it's all right. Roasty. It's just a big one. We're just trying to bring the pain to here so you don't feel it later, you know? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know what? You know what? Wow. Nice. Second to last section coming up. Yes, sir. Yeah. You could not be in a better spot. Right? Put a long sleeve t-shirt on. Yeah. yeah, it's right here. They're all right here. Yeah. Looks, it looks good. <laughs> I feel a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, new socks. You just gave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Just speak it to him right now while well, he doesn't. That's a good right idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Feeling good, boss? Mm -hmm. Ready to take her home? Let's do it. He wants this one. Oh, he's finishing it. Woo! Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm already. Yeah, here we go. Real set. What is it? It's like 2 a.m. Yeah. And you guys are here, so just know that I appreciate that. It's been a long day, and yeah, I'm just forever grateful for it. It's not possible without you guys. Like really, like I couldn't even like take my shoe off. <laughs> right. So, thank you, and I'll see you soon. Hell yeah! Hey, see you soon. Let's go. Si se puede. Si se puede. One, two, two three. three. Si, si se puede. puede. Alright, let's go. Go, bro. Right, guys, take it easy. Let's go. Bye. Jeremy, thank Keep you, man. It, dude. Give me a hug. That was fun, man. Thank you, man. Keep crushing it, dude. We'll see you at the finish line. Alright, man. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs gotta eat. What's the plan? Oh, dog. Are you just get to their face? Nope. 
It's happening. It's time. Let's get it done. Let's go. Let's go, big bro. So when uh, Danny asked me to pace him, uh, it, it was a big surprise, and uh, I felt very excited and honored to do that. Uh, we've been talking about the race for a long time, and he was very excited to uh, exciting to be there for him and uh, help him out, especially in the last part of the race, because you know uh, it, it's a long race, and uh, especially after not sleeping for a few hours, you know, hungry, thirsty. Uh, to be able to help him finalize it, uh, it, it felt fantastic. It, it was a long night. I think we made it to uh, that part of the race maybe around 2.45, 3 in the morning. And uh, it, was, it was cold. It was cold. We were tired, we were you know, sleepy, but we were ready to roll. Water, water, electrolytes. Here, we're going to fill up the top, I think. Food was Hungry? Yeah. Food in here. Yeah, so food. Oh. 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 Right, okay, boss, bro. Need a, a headlamp that works better. Okay, better headlamp. So dude, come up. You won't need it for too long, but how's your feet? You're good. Oh dude, awful. <laughs> how's your spirit? Hi. Oh yeah. Very good. Okay, Luis, where are you? Luis! Luis, Luis! Alright, you're in? Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Got this yeah, so, got it. what we're gonna do here is you're gonna walk right across this, this line right here. They got mashed potatoes, they got ramen. You're gonna go have a quick snack. Okay, he's got all your water, he's got all your food. Uh -huh. I just want you as light as possible. Yeah. So, as you go for the next 13 miles, just say Luis water, Luis food. Okay, got I don't it. want anything on you. Place. On you. Yeah. He's gotcha. got everything you need, okay? Sounds go get you a warm plan. snack. Thank you. Some warm food, get you some ramen. Okay. Right, finish strong, baby. Finish line. Let's go! Take the headlamp, right? Yeah. 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 Danny, I, uh, I want you to know that I am proud of you. I, I love you, man. You are a great human being. And uh, to be part of your uh, race uh, has been the greatest honor of my life. Uh, not only during the race day, but uh, all the planning that uh, you know we we did together, uh, all the logistics, uh, getting uh, 20 people uh, to move from one place to a different place, and having the the roads designed, and uh, even know uh, who's gonna be driving in which car. Uh, I mean, all that we made it look easy, but it was a lot of work behind the scenes, and uh, just uh, seeing you be ready the day of the race and uh, it, it makes my heart happy because I am, I definitely know how hard you work for it. Every day, no excuses, uh, you know, getting up at six in the morning to go to your uh, workouts or uh, always super consistent. That's something that I uh, admire you the most. It, it makes me happy because I know that you work hard for it. And I know uh, it's a mystery, but you're probably already thinking about your next big goal. And uh, whatever you decide, I'm gonna support you and I'm gonna be there for you. And uh, I know it's gonna inspire a lot of people. And uh, I can't wait to hear what's, uh, what's coming next. I'm gonna go find him. Yep. I'm gonna start shouting. Go. We gotta pick it up. It's time. It's go time. Let's go. Let's go, bros. Come on. Yes, sir.
The boys are waiting. Yeah. Looking good? Feeling good? Eat up, man. We're here, man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You look so strong. It, here we go. 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 Let's go! Let's go! Here we go! Right through, right through. So we kept moving, but I was just hiking, walking, just trusting my brother to do his thing. And it was like pretty cool because it reminded me at some point, like let's say six miles in, of just being young with my brother and like me following him, like his footsteps. So think about like, I don't know, when I was six, five, four, and then like he was doing something and I was like trying to follow him. It felt the same way, which was like very nostalgic just having my brother there. And we just kept moving. He was like, hey, you want water? You want food? And at that point, I didn't want anything. I was just like, dude, let's just get to the finish line. I wanted to stop about a mile out um, from uh, from the finish line, you know, Daniel came in a little late to that first checkpoint uh, and it's all uphill, those final three miles. And so I wanted to give ourselves a little bit of grace, a little bit of room to breathe uh, by seeing where he was at um, in that final mile, um, getting an understanding of where he was about two miles out, three miles out. Uh, because we were coming down to the minutes, coming down to the timing. Um, you know, you've got till 10 a.m. to finish this race. Uh, 10, 9 a.m. crossed, um, and he was de he was still about three miles out. Um, after we about got made it to about 9:20, um, I made the decision to run out to Daniel. Uh, at about mile 98, 98.5, if you will, um, because wanted him to run this thing through. Uh, whatever energy he had left, whatever uh, last bit of peace, you know, mindset, dig deep uh, that was remaining, um, I wanted him to feel that final push. So found him with about a mile and a half to go. Uh, was looking great, was looking happy, surprisingly, after, you know, m making it through what he did. Uh, and we set off to uh, do what we called our, our little, uh, about 20 feet runs, 20 feet walks, 20 feet run, 20 feet walks. Uh, so we could really take that through the final, final line. Um, but what made this really cool was it was my intention to go out there and be the coach, be the voice. Uh, Daniel was calling out, okay, let's run. Okay, now let's run. Okay, now let's run. So to see his mental state and to be, see his mindset after you know mile 99 and beyond of telling himself that now I can run, now I can run, I thought was one of the most motivating, coolest moments uh, that I've ever seen somebody go through. Uh, 
Fuck yeah. Fucking did it, bro. Hell yeah. Fucking did it. <laughs> Thank you. You don't need these anymore, right? No. Awesome. All right. How Dude, I'm grateful I get to do this shit. Like, it's been six months of preparation. Not like I just woke up and I was like, let me do this. So being able to like work on something for that long and then seeing the result of it, at the same time like seeing how it has made an impact. I think to me like that's so cool. And it's just the beginning. Bro, season put is it's gonna happen. It's been happening. Like, I think this was like the last stamp. I believe this race, led to the 100, was a great reminder that you can go for something that seems impossible. And if you put in the work consistently, if you are able to push through obstacles, you can make it happen whatever that is and me coming back from Winfield back to Twin Lakes was that experience of like man we can do more than we think and in a way the sky's the limit like literally like it just gave me so much confidence about my ability to do things and I hope this can help inspire other people to do things that they think is impossible, to do things that are hard, because through that process, there's growth, and you get to become a better version of you by pushing through it and getting it done. I've done a lot of races, and I've crossed the line with like no people, and I've crossed the line with people, and as far as like like family, friends being there, and I always enjoy when the people that I love and appreciate are there. But this is like a group of like 19, 20 people, right? So it was like super meaningful just being able to cross it. And it's also the first time I do a race where everybody has a role. Everybody has something to contribute. So for me, like this was more than just, hey, I crossed the line. This is like, we all crossed the line and we all putting a lot of work we all sacrificed. So in a way, like, it just felt really good that it was a win for everybody. Cause like the goal of the team was to help me finish and to be able to see you guys witness that. And like for me to be able to see you guys there too, was just a moment where I was very grateful that everything worked out. We all put in the work and we all made it to the end. But the attempt is really what is great about this whole thing. It's like getting uncomfortable, going for something, and knowing that there's a probability that you might not make it to the other side. But the fact that you attempted it is a great thing because it allows you to reach more than what you are used to. Ready? One, two, three. See you later.